At first glance, there's nothing so terrible about it. A silver ball inside of a metal structure. That's not scary. Unless you know what the ball is. It's a so-called demon core. The heart for atomic bombs. In the alloy, there's a fissionable plutonium with tungsten carbide around it. A reflector that excites the core and makes it unstable. It only takes one touch to be crippled. It only takes one sudden move to be killed. If you leave it unattended, something even worse will happen. The scientists who had studied this core understood it was dangerous, but ignored the voice of reason. What were they up to? Where did the name Demon come from? And where is it now? How did the Demon try to get to its creator? And how did everyone around it get possessed? There were times when the periodic table stopped at the element number 92, uranium. And then she came, Lise Meitner. Austrian physicist and radiochemist, phenomenal scientist, the first woman professor in the history of the University of Berlin. She of all people could solve the riddle that tormented everyone, the process of nuclear fission. She explained how new elements could be obtained by attacking uranium with neutrons, and moreover, where the energy comes from. Lisa thought that she was serving science and the world while she was solving the riddle. But as soon as the President of the United States, Roosevelt, learned about the discovery, he ordered the scientists to keep quiet and the military to organize a secret project for developing nuclear weapons. Millions were spent. The best foreign scientists and engineers were taken to Los Alamos' closed laboratory in the New Mexico desert. The place where Lise's discovery was put into practice and where the demon obtained a vessel. But who woke it up? The hot evening of August 1945. A young scientist from Los Alamos, Harry Doglian Jr., left his office after a working day. Having finished dinner around 9 o'clock, Harry decided to return. He passed the security guard, who was a little surprised, but let him in anyway. At that moment, the scientist decided to conduct an experiment with the Demon Core. But what made him do it? And why, at such a late hour? He placed a ball between the tungsten carbide blocks, which served as a reflector for neutrons hurtling from the core. With the addition of each new block, the core was approaching a dangerous state. When neutrons have nowhere to go, an uncontrolled chain reaction is triggered. While attempting to install a new block, Doglian dropped it right on the plutonium. And suddenly, a flow of blue light hit the ceiling. Doglian tried to destroy the block construction and appease the core. But it was too late. It happened. The skin on his hand became covered with blisters and came off. Harry fell into a coma and died 25 days later from severe radiation sickness, becoming the first victim of the sinister core. He was 24. Did Meitner know about that? No, she didn't. Chased by the Nazis away from everyone, she fully dove into her work. Meanwhile, the demon was trying to find her. Lise's nephew, Otto Frisch, joined a secret U.S. project as part of the British mission. Anticipating a great job in Los Alamos, he asked Lise to join him and come with him. Lise loved Otto like the son she never had. Frisch was there when she discovered fission. But Lise responded to his offer the only way she could. I will have nothing to do with the bomb. But did the curse of the Demon Corps end there? A year after Doglian, the scientist Louis Slotten repeated the experiment with the Corps. He did it about a dozen times and felt very confident. On the 21st of May, 1946, Slotten decided to conduct an unscheduled experiment in the presence of several colleagues. The scientist placed the plutonium core between two hemispheres that functioned as reflectors. In order not to share the fate of Doglian, Louis Slotten held the upper sphere, 
leaving the way out for the neutrons. That was smart, apart from the fact that he was doing it with an ordinary car screwdriver. No one stopped him. And at one point, the screwdriver just slipped. The spheres closed and the room was filled with blue light. Slotin instantly pushed the hemispheres back, but one second was enough. This time, it wasn't just one death. Slotin died nine days later in terrible agony at the age of 35. Others who were present eventually died of radiation-induced diseases. The rest began to take the power of the core seriously. The U.S. authorities decided to destroy the demon core by detonating it during nuclear testing, but they failed to do so. The core had already been too unstable. The core was subsequently melted down for the manufacture of other weapons. The demon hasn't disappeared, but in a way, it has taken new forms. 1966. An American B-52G aircraft is patrolling the area as usual, with four thermonuclear bombs on board. The fuel starts to run out rapidly. The B-52G is trying to refuel in the air and collides with a tanker aircraft. Two of the bombs that fell ruptured, causing radiation land contamination. All members of the crew died. 1968. Another incident. A bomber of the same type is conducting a combat patrol, also with four nuclear weapons. During the flight over Greenland, a fire inexplicably breaks out on board. The plane was doomed. It crashes, leaving a huge black spot on the ice. Three munitions collapsed and caused an extensive land contamination. The fourth one that fell into the water was never found. But the list of tragic accidents with plutonium and uranium goes on. In 1978, the Soviet satellite under the name Cosmos 954 was carrying out radar reconnaissance. It was fueled by only one kilogram of uranium, identical to the one in the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The satellite was completing its mission, flying over Canada, when its onboard equipment suddenly stopped functioning. It smashed into the ground, catching fire on the way. Over a hundred bits of radioactive debris scattered throughout Canada's Northwest Territories, leading to land contamination and an international scandal. It may seem like these are just stories from the past, but no, cases like this happen all the time, everywhere, as if the world is forever cursed and all because of the initially innocuous and really important discovery of Lise Meitner. But how did her story end? Lise Meitner lived the remainder of her life in England. She received many awards and taught until her last day. All her life, she regretted that her discovery was used that way. She had no family, no children. She was possessed only by the spirit of exploration. The Demon Corps had been unable to get its hands on her. Lisa Meitner died at the age of 89 in her sleep. Her headstone says, Lisa Meitner, a physicist who never lost her humanity. And yet, do you think people mystically get possessed by the Demon Corps for real? Or is this all coincidence? Write your opinions in the comments.